I've done a bunch of videos where I use words like pressure and let me write these down pressure and temperature temperature and volume and I've done them in the chemistry and the physics playlist and then I especially in the physics playlist but even in the chemistry playlist I also use words like kinetic energy kinetic I'll just write E for energy or I use um, force force and velocity and you know, a whole bunch of other other types of uh, I guess properties of things for better or for worse. And in this video what I want to do is I want to make a distinction because it becomes important when we start getting a little bit more precise, especially when we get more precise in, in thermodynamics or, or I guess you know the study of, of how, how heat moves around. So these properties right here, these are properties of a system. or we could call them these, these are macro states of a system. Macro states. Macro states. And these, these could be macro states. So for example, let me, let me make it clear. When I call a system, if I have a balloon, if I have some balloon like this, and it has a little tie there, and you know, maybe it has a string, this has these macro states associated with it. There is some pressure in that balloon. Remember, that's force per area. There is some temperature for that balloon, temperature. And there's some volume to the balloon, obviously. But all of these, these help us relate what's going on on that inside that balloon or what, what that balloon is doing in kind of an everyday uh, reality. Before people even knew about what an atom was, or maybe they thought that there might be such an atom, but they'd never proved it, they were dealing with these macro states. They could measure pressure. They could measure temperature. They could measure volume. Now, we know that that pressure is due to things like you have a bunch of atoms bumping around, and let's say this is a gas. Well, if it's a balloon, it's going to be a gas. And we know that the pressure is actually caused, and I've done several. I think I did the same video in both the chemistry and the physics playlist. I did them a year apart, so you can see if my, my thinking has evolved at all. But we know that the pressure is really due by you know, just the, the bumps of these particles as they bump into the walls of the side of the balloon. And we have so many particles that at any given point of time, some of them are bumping into the wall of the balloon. And that's what's uh, essentially keeping the balloon pushed outward, giving it its pressure and its volume. We've talked about temperature as essentially the average kinetic energy of these of these balloons, which is a function of, of these particles, which could be either the molecules of gas or if it's a if it's an ideal gas, it could be just the atoms of the gas. Maybe it's you know atoms of helium or 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 or, uh, or neon or something like that. And all of these things, these describe the microstates. So for example, I could describe what's going on with the balloon. I could say, hey, you know, there are. And let me, I could just make up some numbers. I could, you know, there the the pressure is pressure is, uh, you know, let's say it's five newtons per five newtons per per meter squared or some number of pascals. The units aren't what important. The, 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 in this video, I really just want to make the differentiation between these two ways of describing what's going on. I could say the temperature. I could say the temperature is 300 Kelvin. I could say that the volume, the volume is, I don't know, maybe it's one liter. And I've described the system, but I've described it on a macro level. Now, I could get a lot more precise, especially now that I, we know that things like atoms and molecules exist. What I could do is I could essentially label every one of these molecules, or let's say atoms, in, in the gas or that's in, contained in the balloon. And I could say at, at exactly this moment in time, you know, I could say at time equals 0, molecule, you know, atom 1 has, uh, you know, its, its momentum is equal to x. And its position, its position in three-dimensional coordinates are x, y, and z, right? And then I could say atom number two, its momentum. I'm just using rho for momentum, or p. It's equal to y, and its position is a, b, c. And I could go and give you this. I could I could list every atom for in this molecule. Obviously, we're dealing with a huge number of atoms on the order of 10 to the 20 something so it's a it's a massive list i would have to give you but i could literally give you the state 
of every atom in, in, in this balloon. And in, if I did that, I would be giving you the microstates. Or I would give you a specific microstate of the balloon at this time. Now, the, if, when, a, when a system, and I'm going to introduce a word here, because this word is important, especially as we go, is in thermodynamic equilibrium. So let me write that down. Equilibrium. Equilibrium. And we we learned about equilibrium from the chemistry point of view, and that tells you you know uh, the, the amount of something going in the forward reaction is equivalent to the amount going in the reverse reaction. And when we talk about macrostates, thermodynamic equilibrium essentially says that the macrostate is defined, that they're not changing. If this balloon is in equilibrium at at time one, its pressure will be its pressure, temperature, and volume will be these things. And if we look at it a second later, its pressure, temperature, and volume will also be these things. It's in equilibrium. None of the macrostates have changed. And actually, I'll talk about it in a second. In order for these macrostates to even be defined, to be well defined, you have to be in equilibrium. I'll talk about that in a second. Now, at second number, at time equals 0, you might have this whole set of, you know, I, I went and I listed 10 to the 20th something microstates of all of the different atoms in this molecule. But then if I look at this, 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 these gases a second later, I'm going to have a, a, a completely different microstate, right? Because all of these guys are going to have bumped into each other and, and given each other diff, you know, their momentum. And all sorts of crazy things could have happened in a second here. So I would have a completely different microstate. So even though we're at thermodi thermodynamic equilibrium and our macrostates stay the same, our microstates are changing every you know, gazillionth of a second. They're co constantly changing. And that's why, for the most part, in thermodynamics, we, we tend to deal with these macrostates. And actually, most of thermodynamics, or at least most of what you will learn in a first year chemistry or physics course, it was, it was devised or, or it was thought about well before people even had a sense of what was going on at the macro level. And that's often a very important thing to think about. Sometimes when, and we'll go into concepts like entropy and internal energy and things like that, and, they, and you're, you, know, you kind of rack your brain, how does it relate to atoms? And it's sometimes, and we will relate them to atoms and molecules, but it's useful to think that the people who first came up with these concepts came up with them not really being sure what was going on at the micro level. They were just measuring everything at the macro level. Now, I want to I want to go back to this idea here of equilibrium of equilibrium. Because in order for these macro states to be defined, the system has to be in equilibrium. And let me let me explain what that means. If I were to take a let's say I were to take a cylinder and we will be using this cylinder a lot. So it's good to get used to this cylinder. Good cylinder there and it's got a piston in it and that's just a it's kind of the roof of the cylinder can move up and down the roof of the this is the roof of the cylinder the cylinder is bigger but let's say this is a kind of a roof of the cylinder and we can move this up and down and essentially we'll just be changing the volume of the cylinder right i could have drawn it this way i could have drawn it like a cylinder you know my drawing skills are i could have drawn it like this uh, and then I could have drawn the piston like this. So there's some depth here that I'm not showing. We're just looking at the cylinder front on, right? And so at any point in time, let's say the gas is between the cylinder and the floor of our container. You know, we have a bunch of molecules of gas here, a huge number of molecules. And let's say the we have a rock on the cylinder that it kept essentially Let's say we're doing this in space. So everything above the piston is a is a vacuum. Actually, let me just erase everything above. So let me just erase this stuff. Just so you see it. We're we're doing this in space and we're doing it in a vacuum. This so let me write that down. So all of this stuff up here is a vacuum. Which essentially says there's nothing there. There's no pressure from here. There's no particles here. It's just empty space. And in order to keep this, we know already, we've studied it multiple times, that this gas is generating, you know, things are bumping into into this, the wall of this, the, fl the floor of this piston all the time. They're bumping into everything, right? We know that's continuously happening. So we need to apply some pressure to offset the pressure being generated the gas, otherwise the piston would just expand. It would just move up and the whole gas would expand. So let's just say we stick a big rock. We stick a big rock or a big weight on top. Let me do it in a different color. We put a big weight on top of this piston where the, the, the force is 
completely offsets the force uh, being applied by the gas. And obviously, this is some force over some area, right? the area of the piston over some area, so we could figure out its pressure. And that pressure will completely offset the pressure of the gas. But the pressure of the gas, just as a reminder, is going in every direction. The pressure on this plate is the same as the pressure on that side, or on that side, or on the bottom of, of, the, of the container that we're dealing with. Now, let's say that we were to just evaporate this. Well, let's, say, let's, say, let's not say that we evaporate the rock. Let's say that we, we just evaporate half of the rock immediately. Right? So all of a sudden, our, our weight that's being pushed down, or the force that's being pushed down, just goes to half immediately. Let me draw that. So I have, maybe I be better off just cut and pasting this right here. So if I copy and paste it. So now I'm going to evaporate half of that rock magically. So let me take my eraser tool, and I just evaporate half of it. And now what's going to happen? Well, this piston is now applying half the force. It can't offset the pressure due to this gas. So this whole thing is going to be pushed upwards. But I did it so fast. I did it so fast. You could try it. I mean, it's, you know, this would be true of a lot of things. If you had a weight hanging from a spring and you would just remove half the weight, it wouldn't just go very you know, nice and smoothly to another state. What's going to happen is, and let me see if I can do this using their cut and paste tool. It'll essentially, right when I evaporate half of it, the gas is going to expand a bunch, and then this weight is going to come back down. It's going to spring and go down. So let me do it again. It's going to expand because that gas is going to push up, and then it's going to come back down. And then you know, it's just going to oscillate a little bit. And then eventually, it'll come back to some stable, and maybe it'll go back. It'll be like right about there. And let me fill this in. This, this, is, this shouldn't be white. This should be black. Let me put some walls on it, on the container. Some walls on the container. So if we wait long enough, eventually we'll get to another equilibrium state where this thing isn't, the piston on top isn't, or the ceiling isn't moving anymore. And now the gas is, has filled this container. Now, at this point in time, we were in equilibrium. The pressure throughout the gas was the same. The temperature throughout the gas was the same. The volume was in a stable situation. It wasn't changing from second to second. So because of that, our macro states were well defined. Macro states well defined. Well defined. Now, when we wait long enough, this thing will get to some stability where this thing stops moving. When this thing stops moving, our volume stops changing. And hopefully, our pressure will start become uniform throughout the container, and our temperature will become uniform. It will now be a higher volume, a lower pressure, probably a lower temperature, if we assume that there's no other heat being added to the system. And then we'll be well-defined again. We'll be well-defined again. So we could say what the pressure and the volume and the temperature is going, temperature is going to be. But what about right when I removed this rock, and this thing flew up, and it oscillated, and for a while the pressure at the top was lower than the pressure down here. Maybe the temperature at the top was lower than the temperature down here. The whole thing was in a state of flux. It was not in equilibrium. And at that point, when we're, let me, let me draw that really. So you know, we, we were in that state where everything was just crazy, right when we evaporated the rock. You know, we have a little rock up here. Everything's go it's going up and down. Maybe the pressure up here was lower than the pressure was than the lower than the pressure down here. The temperature was lower than the temperature. Everything did not have a chance to reach an equilibrium at this state. And this is important, especially as we go into talking about things like reversible reactions and uh, reversible processes and and quasi-static processes. At this point in the reaction, when we just did this. None of these macro states were well defined. You couldn't tell me what the volume of the system is, because it's changing for every second to second, it's, or microsecond to microsecond, it's fluctuating. You couldn't tell me what the pressure of the system is, because it's changing every second. You couldn't tell me what the temperature is. Maybe the, te the temperature could be, you know, if I did this, as a, this, the temperature could be something there, it could be something there. All sorts of crazy things are happening. So when the system is in a state of flux, your macro states are not well defined. And I, I really want to hit that point home. So let me just draw that in a diagram. Let me draw that in a, in a PV diagram. And we're going to use these fairly heavily. So on my y-axis, I'm going to put pressure. In my x-axis, I'm going to put volume. So 
Our initial state here, when we had the rock sitting on top of this ceiling, this movable ceiling, or this piston, maybe we had some well-defined pressure and volume. So my y, so this is pressure, and this is volume. So this is where we started off. So it was well-defined. This is state 1. Let me label it right there. This is state 1. Now, when we evaporated half the rock, we, got, we eventually, and we waited long enough, and this got to an equilibrium, we got to state 2, and our pressure, volume, and our temperature was well-defined. And I'll just put it on this pressure volume. So maybe this is state 2. We got down here. And just as a side, why, you know, I could maybe put temperature as an extra dimension, but temperature is completely determined by pressure and volume, especially if we're dealing with an ideal gas. Remember, and we did this in multiple videos, you know, you have PV is equal to N, well, we could eat, well, I'll write N, R, T. These are, co these are constants. The number of moles isn't changing. This is the universal gas constant, not changing. So if you know P and V, you know T. So that's the only two things we have to plot. But I'll, I'll talk mo a lot more about that in future videos. But the important thing to realize is I started off at this state where pressure and volume were well-defined. I finished in this state where pressure and volume were well-defined. But how did I get there? And because this reaction I did all of a sudden, it happened super fast, and it was essentially thrown out of equilibrium. Out of equilibrium. Uh, equilibrium. I don't know how I got here. This, this the Pressure and volume were not well defined from going from that state to this state. Pressure and volume and temperature are only well defined if, if, every, if every, um, every intermediate step is still almost in equilibrium. And we'll talk a lot more about that in the next video. But I want to really make this point home. It would be nice if we could draw some you know, path. We could say, oh, you know, as every we moved from some pressure and volume to some other pressure and volume, and we moved along a well-defined path. But we cannot say that. Because when we went from there to there, our definitions just disappeared for pressure and volume. We cannot define those, those macro states in these intermediate non-equilibrium states. Now, just as a little aside, we could have defined the microstates. The microstates never change. At any given snapshot in time, I could have listed every particle that's in this thing, and I could have given you its kinetic energy, I could have given you its position, I could have given you its momentum, and there's no reason why I couldn't have done that. So I could have actually made a, you know, I could have made a plot of one particular particle, and I could have said what its kinetic energy and its over a course of time is at any given moment in time. And this is really important. So microstates are always well defined. The microstates, what's exactly happening to the atom in terms of its force and its velocity and its and its momentum, while macrostates are only defined, are only I should say well defined when the system, in this case it's the balloon, in this case it's this piston on top of the cylinder, this movable ceiling. The macrostates are only well defined when the system is in equilibrium, or where you can essentially say, when you say the pressure is x, the pressure is the same throughout, or the volume isn't changing from moment to moment, or the temperature is the same thing throughout. Anyway, I'll leave you there, and we'll talk more about why I went through all of this pain in the next video.